Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and in this video I want to show you how to make beautiful custom picks just like these. And before I start, I just want to say that I'm not an expert in pick making, but I do know my way around how to make these types of custom picks. And I also want to thank Tipene from New Zealand, who is a brilliant pick maker, as well as Naz Evers for all of their help, assistance and knowledge in learning how to make custom picks. And by extension, I want to thank people like XB Mods and Rev Tattoo for their inspiration. Anyway, let's crack on. So let's talk about material selection. There's so many options out there that you could use. I mean, you pretty much use offcuts of anything dry, um, but I like to use these pen blanks and pick these up for um, sometimes around one to two pounds each. And, um, and they usually come in sections that are about two centimeters by two centimeters by about 15 centimeters or thereabouts. Um, but you can also buy acrylic ones like this, and these come in all sorts of colors. Um, and you've got to make sure that you sort of cut this way to get the pattern. Um, but yeah, really cool. And again, they're a little bit more expensive um, at somewhere between three and five pounds, or sometimes a bit more each depending. But again, really good options there for handles. I've made a template just out of some uh, cheap plywood just to draw around so that I can mark off where I want to make uh, my pick and it keeps them all consistent. And also this shape's good because if you turn it the other way up, you can get another pick out of the same blank. So four out of this one uh, two pan piece of wood. Very good. So what about the pick material itself? What can you get? Well, uh, sparrows sell partially made pick blanks and that's made of their um, awesome steel but Law Lock Tools and Peterson also sell offcuts and you know they have great steel as well so that's always a great option check out the lock pick manufacturer see if they've got um, uh, manufacturing offcuts or partially made pick blanks you might be able to uh, find somebody who sells some good quality steel this is some 301 max yield steel um, that's always uh, good but it's very hard to come by uh, keep checking eBay and places like that. Uh, and then feeler stock. Now, this isn't quite as strong. It's not stainless. Um, well, it is strong. It's just not stainless. And it's um, and it's a bit more brittle. Uh, and this is a coil, which I picked up for £15, pounds, um, which is pretty good when you consider how much of it there is, 20 feet of feeler gauge. In terms of thickness, I like to make picks in 25 thousandths uh, of an inch, but, um, you know, anywhere down to about... 20 thousandths is, is pretty workable. Uh, you can go thinner, but I, I would recommend starting with something a bit thicker. And don't forget, you can actually use um, some wiper blade insert if it's a big one from a truck like this. What I use for the pins is just some three millimeter brass rod. In fact, this is what I make my custom lock pins out of as well, for that matter. So this is um, uh, really good stuff to have around in general. Um, I choose three millimeter. I know people sometimes do two, two and a half. Um, you don't have to use brass, you can use other metals as well. Brass is just nice to look at and easy to work with. But um, again, they're your picks, make them how you like. So I've got my raw materials now. And apart from some really high strength epoxy resin, um, glue, uh, this is pretty much all we're going to need apart from our tools. So I reckon let's just get going and make some picks. So here we are after just grinding the pick blanks out and putting a file to the top of them just to keep it straight, I'm not looking to 
uh, make it really nice and polished yet we'll do that with some um, wet and dry paper um, but yeah that's that's six of those started to cut these uh, blanks in half now what I'll be doing is tracing around them with a pencil and then cutting them out on the saw so we get some nice handles and cutting a tang slot here then we'll need to chop these off probably using a uh, little multi-tool to about four centimeters insert them into the tang slot and then depending on the depth we will file off this part here this overhang um, obviously this won't be there because the, the tang won't go that far down we'll file that off so it's nice and flush um, the top will need filling in with some epoxy because these um, pick blanks aren't quite as big as the handle needs to be but that's fine um, what else I want to show you Ah, oh, one last thing for a carry on to drill the holes for the pins I have got this uh, sheet metal hole punch and I have a, a 3.16 millimeter or one eighth of an inch um, hole punch and that is good because it gives a tiny amount of space around the hole for the um, epoxy resin which I'm going to be using to, to glue it in with um, and it also means that it's a little easier to get the, uh, um, the the pin through the hole. So yeah, that's that's what I'm using. And uh, this this is really 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 awesome for doing its job.
And here we are all completed. So um, I'm, I'm actually really pleased with these. It's really hard to get consistency when you're working with so many pieces and there's always, you know, nothing's that accurate when you're working the way that I work in a small workshop. Um, but all in all, I mean, the, you know, they, they still manage to be really, really still close to, um, their original shapes and they've remained sort of consistent between um, the lot of them even though they're not going to remain as a set I'm going to uh, gift these away to some friends um, but you can see here how they are all pretty uniform and nicely thin as well so um, I don't know if you've ever uh, had a like a, a big thick lock pick handle and they are just not that pleasant to actually use um, so there you go, you can see the mirror shine I've got on that uh, pick tip and all the pick tips. I mean, um, it's really hard to get across in camera just how shiny these are, but I managed to get a really nice mirror polish on. The um, finish on the picks themselves is just beeswax, heavily buffed, um, but it gives a, a kind of like a, a silky sheen as opposed to a bright shine. And that's actually quite a nice uh, feel in the fingers as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with these. I think they, they look great. Um, they're, they're a nice profile for me as well. Um, I think I quite like these this dark wood. Um, and the profile is just nice because you, you've got just enough to grip with your thumb and forefinger here. But you know, you don't have a cumbersome tail to the pick. But it's nice and long, which means that you know, no matter how you hold it, it's always going to just... Uh, nestle on the crook of your hand here um, even if you've got large hands and of course I've gone for the short hook because it's by far just the the best profile in terms of getting you into the most locks and these are very very thin shank heights um, are obviously designed for those tighter European keyways so these thin long shanks should definitely um, get some really nice opens on those really tight keyway so yeah I'm, I'm really pleased with these um, let me know what you think in the comments do you like these think I made a good job would you make them yourself uh, any hints and tips um, I'm you know I know what I'm doing in terms of pick making but I'm always willing to uh, learn every day's a school day you can never learn enough I always say and uh, you know if you've got some other hints and tips or ideas then I'm absolutely willing to uh, to, to listen so yeah Put those in the comments below we can all learn off them okay awesome um i really enjoyed making these i hope you enjoyed the video sorry about the mixture of lighting but making pics like these takes about oh four days i think um, all in all with the limited time that i have so um especially making this number so you know it's it's going to be i think daylight and various <laughs> room lights and studio lighting you know whatever i can have at hand at the time so sorry about the mixture of lighting anyway hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you all next time